Hi everyone, and welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. So, sadly, a pre-record because I've got to be somewhere else. But what are we going to do? We're going to look at the Humble Bottle Stopper Kit. Such a simple little thing to make, or is it? Um, I've made quite a few of these over the years. I've made quite a few mistakes over the years. So it's really disappointing when you get to that last stage and you suddenly realise that maybe you could have done it slightly differently. So what mistakes have I made? I've had them so they won't join together nicely. You get a gap, so this part screws on. We'll show you a bit closer in a minute. Uh, I've got my hole the wrong size, so actually it's stripped the thread out. I can glue them in, so there's, there's different things we can look at. A few techniques and tips along the way that hopefully will help you make simple bottle stopper. Um, this is going to sound really bad, but great Christmas gift, okay? We're not sure what you really will do with these, because I thought you had the bottle of wine and drunk it, but okay, that, that's a minor thing, isn't it? So we're a bottle stopper. Let's see if we can have a quick look somewhere on one of the other cameras. Look, okay, so there we go. We've got bottle stopper kit. This is one of the gold ones, long teardrop shape. Well, major thing from our point of view is taking possibly a scrap piece of wood. Now, this wasn't a scrap, all right, I confess. This is a piece of king wood, something quite decorative, nice piece of set wood. But by adding a threaded stud, we can fit it onto our bottle stopper, all right? So they screw together. Quite a nice thing that you can make, present to someone. The other nice thing with this is you're using those little bits of wood. Nothing very big. Nothing that gets too expensive. You can buy dedicated timber for it if you like. So these are about one and a half inch square, 40 mil square will be big enough. This is two and a half inches long. So that's 50, 62 mil for those people that want it in metric. Okay. So I start about two and a half inches long. All right. 62 mil roughly. All right. That's not set in stone. You can alter your sizes. You can make whatever shape you want. But quite easy to get. Even some of this will come out the corners of where I cut my bulb blanks out. So instead of throwing that, that corner bit out and binning it, I cut a little block out, use some of that nice material. So we've got our blocks, we cut them to length. What do we do, need to do? With it? In reality we've got to put a hole in it, put the threaded bit in, and then turn it. Simple. Now, okay, so how would you want to cut them? First of all, um, I tend to like using my bandsaw at home, it's easier, it's more accessible, so I get these out and cut them on the bandsaw. Doesn't mean things are always square, but I do tend to try and use either a cross sledge on the bandsaw table or something with a right angle corner as a good push block to try and keep it square. But we've got to get the end nice and square to drill the hole. So, first thing we want, chuck. Now I've got a set of O'Donnell jaws on here, this is the 38mm ones, though the middle ones. They fit in nicely. I do a block. First we've got to look at what we got. I've got a little crack coming in from the sides here. A little bit on there. This will be better. All right, so we'll just come up there. A little bit of bark defect. Nothing much, but this has got a tiny hairline crack that comes in where it's dried and seasoned. That'll be better on the top of the bottle stopper. This will be the joining part where the stud's going. I've got to get this end clean, flat, and drill the hole. Now, if I go with those O'Donnell jaws, I can sit this right in. I don't know if you can see where we are there. I can sit it, if we look on the overhead, I think we can get a shot. I'm right down into the chuck body. So the piece of wood, if we just hold it, if I just undo it, I can draw this out. You can see the block, and it sits on the chuck body. So the bottom of those jaws actually allow me to sit it all the way through. Really nice to know, because it now means I'm sat evenly. If you didn't want to go with timber, you can obviously go with some of the acrylic or plastic blanks. Other bottle stopper kits where we're looking at things like that. Some of them will have a stud that has a glue-in part. So the screw thread on this end where my fingertip is screws into the metal component. In this case, a stainless steel one. These are made here. The other bit, we glue in so it's nailed. So you'd want to drill your hole to allow that to be glued in. Now let's lose that one just a second. What we're going to use has got a threaded stud, if I get it, out the bag. That's our threaded stud we're going to use for this one. So we have fine thread that screws into the bottle stopper part. The coarse bit has got to go into the timber. Hole size, what do you need? 7.5 to 8 mil will be a good guide. Why do I say 7.5 to 8 mil? Depending on the material density, will change it very slightly. Seven and a half, I'd probably get away with what I've got in here is a piece of plum. It's reasonably hard. 
if I go to the exotics, I need something a little bit bigger because I can't cut that thread in as much. So that's quite an important part. So we're going to go seven and a half in a minute. But we've got to dress this. Now, as much as you might cut it on your table saw, mitre saw, or your band saw, clean this end up. It's one of the biggest mistakes I've made over the years. So we're going to want something as a gouge. Up in that back, going to sew and get my hands a minute. We've got that nice robust tool rest in. Let's bring the lathe switch over. Let's put him on. Don't need too, too much speed, so we're running 15, 1600. Hand round. I'm going to position the gouge on the solid. I'm gently bringing my arm up so the tip comes in, I can find the cut. I'm just going to come off the corners very lightly. All I want to do is clean that end up get it level it can be slightly hollow towards the middle but you've leveled that surface so it's actually true as a circle so I put the gouge back out of the way that's a real simple little tip but so important if it's not level when you screw the bottle stopper onto the woodwork it doesn't line up doesn't meet nicely next important part whoops needs to come up just a little bit gonna mark the center with my skew little dot we want the seven and a half mil drill. We need our drill chuck. Bring that over. So that little dot we've done in the centre will help guide the drill in. Drop the tool rest down. We'll probably actually, let's move our banjo, give me a bit of access. Now, another thing I've done, which you can probably see nicely on the camera there, probably on the overhead, I positioned a piece of tape on my drill. That gives me a length of where I need to drill down to as a depth. Let's see if I can move my fingers a little bit. So it gives me a guide of how deep I need to be. Take the guesswork out of it. You could use a drill stop colour if you like, but a simple thing like a bit of masking tape really helps. If you go too deep with your hole, you can actually weaken it. I've had a few where I've gone too deep, turn the shape and suddenly realise there's no material left between where the hole is and where I've turned it. Um, you end up with a two-part bottle stopper. Doesn't really work. So, that one there. I'm going to bring the speed down, put me more in control. I can hold tail stock and hold the drill chuck. Down to our depth. My slower speed, you're more in control, you're not burning it. Less heat, all those things add up. We're going to take the drill bit out. We've now got to get our stud into that and this is something you know if you're doing them you want to glue them in you can put some ca glue you could go with a slower setting ca so probably thicker you could go with something like a 30 minute epoxy or a five minute epoxy depending on how much time you've got if you're going with the plastic blanks like the acrylics that we said definitely going to need to glue the stud in don't try and wind this in and cut it or fracture it and ship it so how are we going to put it in a couple of things i found that help one and we're going to bring it up let's have a look on here first look we're putting the tail stock snail cutter we've used these before a countersink this in reality is a sheet metal workers tool if you've ever drilled or you put a screw into a piece of wood and it's a biggish diameter screw we've got it's eight mil it'll want to pull the fibers up out a little bit or flare it that can create a bulge in the center so just by using that countersink while I've got the drill chuck, I've just created a small recess where that hole is. Doesn't have to be very much, just enough. So that's a great way of doing it. It's quick and easy once you've got that drill there. Next, we've got to get the stud. We're going to put the coarse thread into that. But how to hold it? You don't want to damage the thread that we've got on here. That's the bit that goes into the bottle stopper. So how can you hold it to get it in there? Why not use the lathe as one part? That holds the workpiece. I've then got a couple of expensive commodities that you might have lying around. Two nuts and a washer, M8 thread. Uh, I've got a nut with a black line on there. I'm gonna put that one on first. My washer, have a nut. Okay, really easy to do. Coming down to where that fine thread finishes, Get the two together just going to grab the two spanners we have one on there we're going to lock these two together twist them up 
So what we've now got, and it looks a bit weird. Course thread, black line on those tell me which nut goes in which place, which will become relevant in a second. The washer in between allows me to undo it easier. Really weird little thing to do. Next thing. We have, most of you have at home, socket set of some type. The nut will fit onto that. Right? So you find the one that fits the nut. I've also got things that you get for your cordless drill. A holder. That's going to go on my tail stock. Just going to bring this up. Course thread has got to go into there. I can start to position it into that hole already because we've got that countersink. Just got to bring it back a little bit. That's what I wanted it to do. Now with this, we are not going to run the lathe. What I don't want to do, barrel handle on the outside. Now I've got position. I'm just going to turn this up by hand. So the coarse thread will wind in. I've got everything nice and straight as we're doing it. So I'm using the tail stock to give me alignment. Now, in reality, any of you with an engineering background will go, that's an engineering thing for pan cutting a thread. Really easy to do. Nice to do, gives you a good position, gets it parallel, makes it controllable, and no effort to fight it, if that makes sense. If you try and do this by hand, and I've done it in the past while trying to put the spanner on, wind it in, you've got to hold the block or hold it on the lathe. Doing that simple thing. Tune it, some one washer. I can wire those off now. Now before I go taking this out, I want to check, and then again, this is things that I've learned from the bottle stopper. Check its screws on. Will it go up to the woodwork? So there isn't a gap between here. If you haven't screwed the stud in far enough at this stage, you can always put the two nuts back on, wind it in that little bit more. But by doing that quick check now, you know that when you get to the final stage, everything's going to come together correctly. Simple little tips, but really effective. Now, those two little nuts, and again, the spanners, put them back out the way. I'll look after those. That's a godsend. Something to hold that, push it up, feed it in. Again, you can use the tail stock, as we said, just to gently feed up. So, move that out of the way. Chuck key, we want the bit of wood out. Chuck's got to come off. If you were doing a batch of these, I'd do, however many I do, in batches of 20. Quite easy to do. We then need some way of holding we find the bit of wood, the blank, on the knife. We don't want to hold it on that thread. It's too delicate. You don't want to gnarl it and crush it. So we'll do things like a bottle stopper arbor. Morse taper, one and two morse taper. That will go in. Make sure it stays in there. Give it a tap. And note, if we give it a tap, use a nylon or wooden mallet. Don't go using a hammer. You'll bear it over. On the front of my bottle stopper arbor, there's a recess on here. Okay, just that step. Okay, I think you'll probably see it there. I think the overhead might show that a little bit more. Yeah, lovely. Look. You can see that little step. Onto there, there's a nylon collar. This gives me an indicator of the size of the chrome work of that bottle stopper. So it's the same diameter. So it tells me where I've got to turn it down to. It also means if I catch it with the chisel, I don't damage the chisel tip. Or the bottle stopper arbor. So that nylon cover, really good. I'm gonna bring that back up. We want ring center. Need something just to support it. I bring them up. Don't need too much pressure for this. This is about adding support, not holding it. It's screwed on, should be good. So my tail stuck, I can just now add what little bit of pressure I want, just so that goes round. There it is. So light pressure on the tail stock, lock it off. Now we've got to do the fun bit. Got to think of a shape. Lock everything down. We can take the speed up. Want a chisel. Which we go with. Want ruffling gouge. One over there. Down to a straight cylinder. So handles down low. So we've got the flute of the gouge slightly on its side. We want it down to a straight cylinder. Tiny bit to go. 
getting tensed up, just lost its pressure, I'm just going to bring it up, there it is, and it's minute, okay, good, we're down to a straight cylinder, roughly go to a puppy finish with, shape wise, what should we go for, okay, a couple of things I've grabbed, two beading tools, I want the parting tool as well, really fast, so my parting tool, I'm going to do straight cut, the width of the parting tool. Then want a bead, how big a bead should we go with? Let's go with 3 eighths, 9.5 mil. Parting cut the other side, level to the one we did. There is a nylon. Going to bring the tool rest up a little bit. Beading tool, 3 eighths. We can roll our bead, if I can come off the edge, we'll be good. One side, roll the other. Keep the handle square, as you go over the handle, it's got to come up a little bit. Just clipping the shoulder of the wall that we've left further up. That's good. Right, nice. Parting tool, just got a light on here, want to lose. So we have our bead. Real simple basic thing using 3.8 beading tool. Using the tools to create the whips I want. Makes it quick and easy to make it repeatable. Alright, correct, just trying to see where it goes, that hairline line down through here. Can't quite see it on the camera. There it is, yeah you can, just, okay. So just seeing what that does. Don't think it will interfere too much. I'm going to do a hollow, a code, we could use spindle gouge, I'm going to use code tool, uh, handle low, I'm going to be lazy, make our hollow, now the advantage we're using this, get a nice clean shot, you're getting that shaving, I'm keeping the wedge section, the top here, level with the cut. Not too far up, almost coming in dead level. I can use the side of it. I can use the tip. Cut them down. Nice and easy to control. This is a difficult place to get into with a small spindle gouge. We're going to create another step the other side. Matching in to what we've already got going to roll this. Perching tool, just to come in a bit smaller. Could have done it with the beading tool, but I want to clash the other side I've already got. Not too bad. Spindle gouge. On its side, Now push along, let's give us a little bit of tension. That's better. Now the reason for using the ring centre, it won't penetrate into the wood as far. So I will end up with a small dot on the end. Nothing too big that we can't get rid of. Let's vary our shape a little bit. Let's put create a hollow. There. Up to our point. Too bad. Quick look on here. Blend the shape together nicely. I'm going to play a bit now. I don't like the step. I've got this end near the top. Then I'm going to go point tool. So what's point tool? It's triangular. I'm going to use it up on edge. We could go with a fine skew, but this will get in a bit further. Add a bit more definition. Using the tip, nice and finely. Blow the dust off, I can see where the tip is. Extend that shape a bit more, I can work round. All the way down in. 
just putting a bit more curve on that other side. Let's have a look. Just want to go a bit of a flat still. Quick look and then we're going to move the tailstock out. So let's change that shape nicely on there. Put my hand under there if you can probably see it comes up more to a pointed edge instead of being dead flat like the bottom. Let's move that tailstock out. Come round to it a little bit. We can work on that top bit. Spindle gear, just checking where my hands are so you guys can see. I can use my fingertip and underneath it. Let's see if I can get them in there. Just to help study anything. Shouldn't get any movement. My fingertip's also telling me what's going on shape-wise, believe it or not. So I've got an idea of where we are. Up to our point. That looks all right. Going to move the tools out of the way. Tail stock up. Going to put the air on for the extractor. We're going to go through a couple of grides of abrasive. Bring the extractor in a little bit. That's better. It's 2415. So we're going to start 150. Speed down. 700 is a good sounding speed. Do a little bit high. Keep it moving. Blend the shape together. And down to that V. Gonna roll the abrasive, make more of a cup shape. Get right down into that hollow, that cove. Work on that bead we cut. Flat section. Flat one, so we're working round. Change the directions a little bit, make sure we got it. A little bit of that crack still showing, we'll level it. One five. Two forty. Quite good. 400. They're working on all those little bits, trying to keep that detail we've added. Step. Got to get into that cove now. So I'm going to roll the abrasive so I can use the side. Should be good. Let's turn the air off. So nice easy one to do. You can do whatever shape you like. You don't have to do it as decorative. You could just do a long teardrop shape. So to polish it and seal it, what can we use? This is going to use the cellulose sealer. So we use this quite a lot, that brings the colour out. So that's thinned a little bit. We have a little bit of blue paper towel. We can dry that off. Now quickly just friction dry a tiny bit. Lightly with the 400. Because this is going to take a little bit of abuse, people picking it up, putting it down. Just going to cut it back. Roll that abrasive. Another coat of sealer. Wipe off the excess. Friction dry, get it out of the places I can't reach with the blue paper towel. 
Okay, not too bad. This stage, if you're doing a bat job, you take it off, you put the next one on. Okay, so you swap it over. At the point of view of polishing, at the moment we've only sealed it. If we put something like a friction polish on, it's going to get drawn into there. A wax isn't going to last. You could go with an epoxy, but that's hard work. Going to take a little bit of drying. You could go with spray lacquer. Melamine lacquer would work. Actually, easiest thing I've found, and it seems to work and last, polishing mop. So we're going to go pale mop. I don't want to darken the plum too much. With our pigtail, a little bit of pale compound. I want about 1800 RPM. And the next thing, to hold them, why not use that mandrel? That makes it easier to give you something to hold and support it. I can work on the side of the mop, come down in, work round it. The only bit I don't want to touch in reality, the metal on the mop, it will dye it black. But that nylon cover really helps. This will act as a grain filler that already looks a little bit more shiny than it did before we came on here. So just a little bit down in there. The white compound, if I put more on, that's it. A little bit goes a real long way. That will act as a grain filler, get right down in between. So we've done first stage. Take it off, then we're going to buff it. So loose mop, some carnauba wax, and it needs to be pure carnauba, not a beeswax blend. That's too soft, it won't hold and it won't last. So, a little bit of that. Again, 1800 RPM is good. Again, you can use the polishing mop arbor or the pigtail, hold the mop, makes it quick and easy to swap over. Hold the bottle stopper arbor, gives you something to support it with instead of trying to grit that little piece of timber. Quick and easy to do. The nylon cover, we just take the mop off. Stops it biting on here, makes it easy to undo them, take them off. Then, easy little bit to do. I've got this right, this screw should screw together. There shouldn't be any gap in between where the chrome work comes up. That's it. How about that? So we have different woods can add a lot of interest. Something like a laburnum with a sapwood would be fantastic. Plum's got a lot of colour. You can do a decorative shape as you like. Um, got a shape in my mind at the moment. I want to do a, a chessboard prawn. Oh, because I reckon that could be interesting. I don't know how that works on a bottle stopper or the top of a wine bottle. It's your move next. I don't know. Okay, but real simple little project to do. Doesn't take too much effort. They use up all those little bit of offcuts that you've got lying about. They can be really decorative. They can be as simple as you like. Hopefully, you have a go. We will be back next week for more Woodwork and Wisdom. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, okay? See you soon. Bye then.